Hello, and welcome to the Knitting with Cat Hair podcast. My name is Nikki. I am also known as Knitting with Cat Hair on Instagram and Cat Hair Knitting on Ravelry. I'm coming to you from Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, which lies atop the traditional lands of the Tegamishing Anishinaabeg people, where I live with my partner, our two daughters, and our five cats, hence the name of the podcast, as I'm always finding cat hair in my knitting. So big warm welcome to all new viewers and a big welcome back to all returning viewers. This is my mostly knitting podcast, but sometimes I get into other crafts that I'm delving into at the time, such as cross stitch or embroidery, spinning, um, natural dyeing, etc. So I've been away for quite some time. Um, life's been just crazy busy. Um, there's been some stressful periods and there's been some really exciting periods and um, I will leave all of the life stuff until the end so that if you're not interested in that kind of thing, you can check out and you're just here for the knitting. And so I will jump right on in. So one admin thing up front, I am running a Jennifer Beal knit along over on Instagram. Um, you can use the hashtag or follow along with the hashtag Beal along. And this started last August, I think. Yes, August 2023, and it's running until the end of September this year. So there's still time to get in. Um, you don't have to finish a Jennifer Beal pattern. You just have to make one and share progress pics over on Instagram using that hashtag. Uh, and I will be drawing two prizes at the end um, to two lucky winners. And what else can I say about that? Um, yeah, if you're not familiar with Jennifer Beale, that was the whole purpose of this make along was to try and bring a little more awareness to one of, I think, Canada's like top notch designers who I feel like doesn't get nearly as much um, recognition as she deserves. So yeah, if you're interested, go on over and check out Jennifer Beale's patterns. She's very big into color work and texture and her, many of her designs are very like interestingly constructed and um yeah i highly 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 recommend so with that i'm going to talk about my finished object and what i am wearing so today i am wearing my finished stephenville crossing i'll stand up quickly but i also tried to take a quick video so i could show you the full extent of the of the top um because i can't just I don't think I can do it justice here, but I'll stand up so you can see some of it. So this is a pattern by Jennifer Beale. As you can see, it features these lovely cable and lace panels. It's a dolman sleeve, so it's kind of like a T-shape. Um, you can't really see the bottom, but you will see it in the video, like I said. And uh, yeah loved making this absolutely loved making this so i'll talk about it in a second i'm going to pop in that video so you can see the full extent of the top and uh, i'll be right back So as I was saying, I really, really enjoyed making this top. It was such an interesting construction. Um, it, I, I've talked about this numerous times in the past, but it started with like this tiny little, two little panels like this, little rectangle panels that you essentially build off of to construct the whole top. So there's a lot of picking up of stitches and working in different directions, which, which really keeps, like it kept my interest. Um, I was kind of like, I didn't fully understand what I was doing while I was making it. So it was really interesting when it all started to come together and I realized, you know, how, how the top was actually constructed. So yes, I had so much fun making it. Um, Jennifer Beale's instructions are very, very thorough, um, easy to follow. And um, my biggest recommendation is that if you do decide to make a Jennifer Beale pattern that you just trust the process follow it step by step and, and I assure you it will work out even if you're in doubt and you don't know where things are heading so yeah I'm very very happy with it um, 
I knit it out of lichen and lace, which is a, a Canadian hand dyed yarn. Uh, I use their sock yarn. So it's an 80% merino, 20% nylon in the colorway linen. And it's like this, oh, I didn't bring one out, but it's this beautiful um, kind of beigey brown. And um, when I started the top, I, like I was using a hand dyed yarn and you know, with hand dyes, it's, it's often recommended that you alternate skeins because you can end up with some pooling or it's just, it's just recommended to try and blend the colors, even though they're the same colorway, um, because they're hand dyed, there's nuances to them. And it's just recommended that you, that you alternate. But in the beginning, because, um, things were a little bit nuts, <laughs> we were heading in all different directions. I was just finding it too hard to manage multiple skeins. So I didn't alternate at the beginning, but then once I joined and started knitting in the round, I don't know if you can, hopefully you can't tell where I started alternating skeins and I blended it in well enough. I think I did. I know um, on the back, I could see a bit of a distinct line, um, but I'm not sure. It really, it didn't show up on the camera as much as it did in person and it's on the back. So honestly, ugh, I, couldn't, I couldn't be bothered. So anyways, yeah, it turned out really lovely. I'm really, really happy with it. I will say um, because it's a super, this is a super wash merino and so I find it a little bit heavier, um, but I needed, like in my mind, I wanted something that was going to have that drape, kind of that, that hanging kind of texture, if you will, to it so that it just felt more flowy, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. I didn't want anything too rigid. Um, because I wanted that kind of bohemian kind of flowy, flowy feel to the, to the garment. So uh, I did choose a super wash and I had it in my stash. So it worked out really well because I had enough for a sweater's quantity. Um, so I used US five, which is a 3.75 millimeter needles to knit the entire thing. I didn't change needles at all for any of the, um, the ribbing or anything like that. I just used the same needles and, um, yeah, I think, I'm trying to think what else I could say about it. I th think I would have to check my Ravelry page. I can't recall how many skeins it took, but I know that I had some left over. So it definitely didn't take my full allotment, which I think was seven skeins. I think it might've taken like five and a half or something like that to make this. And I made the, mm, the size, I think it was like a 50-ish inch bust which might have been the size three this is made quite oversized um, so I know like normally I would make a size five which usually equals an extra large but in this case because the size three was already quite roomy um, I didn't want it like too large so I think that's what I did but again all of my notes and everything I talk about you can find links to in the description down below on this video and it will link to my Ravelry page where I, where I try to keep um, pretty thorough notes so and if you ever have any questions you can feel free to leave a, a comment down below and I will be sure to get back to you and one more thing I am not sponsored by anybody I just talk about what I love on this podcast so that is it for my Stephenville Crossing. I'm very happy with it. Um, yeah, it's, it's a great summer top. I wouldn't say it's great for when it's really, really hot and humid out. Um, there was a period where the weather was quite warm and I was not wearing this. Um, but right now it's nice and it's kind of cool. Um, I don't know what the temperature is. I want to say it's like 17, 18 degrees maybe. And it's perfect. It's perfect. So yes very happy and highly highly recommend making a jennifer beale pattern and i can tell you that this definitely won't be my last i well i had already purchased a whole bunch previously and i definitely will be making more okay so now we can move into works in progress i have several that are like so close to being finished but i just have not gotten there um so i will start with sorry if you see me looking down i'm just looking at my notes I will start with the Folklore Ruffle Top, which is a pattern by Fable Knitwear. Um, I use Drops Kid Silk in an off-white color and Georgian Bay Fiber Co. Bayfield Fingering in the colorway Lichen 
to knit this top. It's this cute little peasant type top. So I have finished all of the knitting, as you can see. So it's got this cute little um, ruffle at the bottom and then just a little bit of um, uh, ribbing to kind of bring it in. And same thing on the sleeves. It's got little ruffled sleeves. And then also around the neckline, there's some color. So I'm, yeah, like I said, I'm done the knitting on this one. I just need to basically weave in my ends and decide if I want to put any embroidery. So you're su not supposed to, but the original design does have embroidery around the, the neckline. And I think I do want to do it. I just have to kind of design it so she doesn't give you you know step by step instructions on how to do the actual embroidery she gives you a rough outline of what she did on hers um, just a little sketch that you could use to to kind of copy if you wanted to or um, create your own so I haven't designed my own yet so I haven't gone ahead and finished it and I to be honest I got a little bit frustrated because the <sighs> I was creating this top to go with a linen dress that I have and it just didn't work. It didn't work because my linen dress, the, the sleeves are just, or sorry, the, um, the straps, I guess, are just too wide. And so the top wasn't doing what I wanted it to. So I wanted to wear it underneath the dress and it just didn't work. So I kind of put it in timeout <laughs> after I got so frustrated. So I did use US two and a half, um, which is a three millimeter needle for the, the, um, the colored bits, the blue face luster. And then I used US four, three and a half millimeter for the, the mohair. So the mohair was held single and um, I made the size five, which was an extra large and it does fit nicely. Um, but again, it's super, super sheer and see-through. So it really was, for me, it was intended to be worn underneath something or over top of something. So I'll find a use for it eventually. But yeah, that's my um, folklore ruffled up. Okay, next up, we have my Bolin top, which is a pattern by Layla Raven. And again, I think I finished all of the knitting on this one just recently. And all I have to do is block, uh, wash and block it and then seam up the sides. So that's, where's the back? I have a back in front, even though they're made the same, the panels are exactly the same. I have a back because I made a mistake in the lace. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you the front. Okay, here we go. So it's literally just two panels that you that you make and seam together. But this one also has interesting construction. Just give me a second here. I have them pinned together. Here we go. Oh right, because they're seamed partially seamed up. I have to seam the shoulders, not the sides. I did the side seams. But anyway, so you start with, I can't remember if it's the right or the left side, but you actually knit this way. So you knit it sideways. And then, um, and then this is the edge of the first part. So it's kind of in knit in quarters. So in the first quarter, you go up back and you pick up all along that edge cast on edge, I guess, would be, right? And um, you start working off of that. So that gives you a mirror image with this, this visible seam down the center, which is quite interesting. The, the lace is really pretty. It's kind of like, I don't know if you can see. Can you see that? It's got, um, I don't know if you call that, I don't know what you call that. They almost look like leaves to me but anyways it's very pretty and so you do that and then you do the exact same thing for the other the back and then you 
seam up the sides with a three needle bind off, which if you haven't tried a three needle bind off, it is like probably one of the easiest, to me, easiest um, <laughs> kind of seaming methods. So you have stitches on both sides live on needles and then you're just taking um, a third needle um, so it doesn't involve any sewing you're using a little literally a third knitting needle and you're just knitting as you normally would so you'd knit except for you're knitting through both sides so you're knitting two together and then you cast off just how you normally would it's just that you're knitting through two stitches instead of one and it creates this so on the outside I don't know if you can see there's the seam on the side and the ridge actually happens on the inside of the garment so that's that and now like I said um, I just have to seam up the underarms with I think they they said mattress stitch is the recommended seaming technique but of course you could do whatever you liked um, I'll probably just follow the instructions and then seam across to create the neck hole but I do need to block this first because I need to see how um, how much the lace is going to spread out so I can see how how far to <laughs> to seam across basically to create my neck hole and yes I know it's short it's a crop top I made mine um, quite cropped I did follow the instructions but I know that my my gauge was off in terms of the um, the row gauge yes I think it was the row gauge anyways I, I, I made it shorter so it turned out shorter anyways but I was intended to, again to wear over linen dresses so it's fine and I love the color so this yarn is Quince & Co Sparrow it's a hundred percent linen and it's in the colorway Penny and to knit this top I used one needle one size of needle US 4 3.5 millimeters and yes it could like it's so funny it took me forever to knit that first quarter and then after that I was just on a huge roll I picked it up this year and I just like it's it's a quick knit <laughs> it is and the lace is is not overly complicated although I will say that you do have to do some lace knitting on the opposite side so on the wrong side um, it's pretty basic lace knitting on the wrong side but it's still it's not just pearls and knits which I was used to so this was a first for me yeah very happy with it very very I can't wait to wear it so I'll probably um, I'll probably get that finished off this weekend okay and next up I have so longer term viewers may remember that I had started to make a cardigan for my daughter a, um, a crocheted cardigan um, using granny squares and it turned out because I used 100% cotton it, they, it just turned out too heavy for her she's quite petite and um, the cardigan was kind of made only like there's only like one size um, for it I just used a I think it was a YouTube tutorial so there wasn't really anything I could do to make it smaller because it's really based on the squares so anyways it turned needless to say it didn't go to waste I told her that if she didn't like it and whatever I would it's not a problem I would take the squares um, unseam the squares and I could find another use for them so I was gonna make bags and then I saw a tutorial for a crush cross body bag. So I, these are the squares. They're like cute little daisies. She had chosen the colors and everything. And it's unlucky because it's something I really like too. Um, so yeah, you just literally take four, looks like four squares. Okay, it's been a little while since I've done this. But yes, you take four squares and you seam them up, fold them up this way add a bit of edging to them and then you create a strap and so I haven't attached the strap yet because I my intention is to put a zipper in here so I still need to purchase a zipper that's gonna fit and then I can sew on my strap and then it will go oh, hopefully I made it long enough I think I checked I hope I checked now I'm second guessing it was a while ago I did this I'm pretty sure I checked I must have um, I could always shorten it I guess and then it just goes uh, across your body 
And my intention was I was doing a lot of walking. Um, I'm still walking, but not quite as much as I was. I was really getting into the walking and I needed um, my pants didn't don't have pockets like my um, I guess they're yoga pants, whatever. They don't have pockets. So I was like, I need to be able to carry my phone because I listen to usually like um, an audio book or music or whatever when I'm walking. So I needed something with some way that I could have like preferably hands free to be able to carry my phone. And that's what the purpose of this was. So yes, very cute. And uh, I will put link to the tutorial. I'm sure I still have it. I saved it. I will put links again to the everything that I talk about and uh, if you're interested in making it it was really easy really really easy um, only used up four squares and I have like a ton more to make to use up but it's nice to do something different because I've already made a few like bags just normal bags granny square bags and so this was just something different and, and useful once it's done um, what to say about that I guess I used Lion Brand cotton. I can't remember the name. I think it's called 24 seven cotton. They have lots of different lovely colors, just hundred percent. It's a Pima cotton, I'm pretty sure. Mm. I think it's a Pima cotton, softer. Anyways, yeah. So that's that. And then um, speaking of crochet, I also did quite a bit of work on my crocheted granny square blanket. Now, I don't know if I can get all of this in, but I have tons of ends to weave in. So this is what it looks like. Oh my gosh. No, I can't. <laughs> it's getting quite large. Oh, I just love the colors though. So these are, for the most part, are all Sonder Sunday Morning DK, um, with the exception of this one green color here. This teal is a Georgian Bay Fiber Co. BFL, and it's actually a fingering, but it's like a heavy fingering, and I just held it single. All the rest are DKs. And ever since I took the pink, I, I talked about this in my last episode, I took the like fluorescent pink out of, this, out of the, uh, the mix. I'm enjoying it much better. So I replaced that pink with this lovely terracotta, dark kind of terracotta color. Yeah. Yeah, so I really like it. It's really fun. And um, again, there was a period where I wasn't feeling well. And then I was, I've, as I've explained in the past, when I'm not feeling well, I reach for crochet because I don't know why I find it soothing. And um, yeah, so that's so that's that. I'm not sure exactly how big I'm going to make it, but definitely want it to be bigger than like a lap quilt. I think I want it to be, if possible, it'd be really great to make it like a bed size, maybe like a twin. No maybe a um a double a double i don't think i'll make a queen but we'll see anyways so that's that for all of the older works in progress but i do have one brand new one that i cast on last weekend and it is the lunenberg pullover which is a pattern by amy christophers or amy christophers savory knitting on instagram um i'll pop in a picture of what the finished sweater looks like now I will say that I did buy, no, I didn't buy a kit. I, I bought pretty much the same colors as the original with the exception of the main color, which I've swapped out. So the main color you will have seen is this lovely gray that really complements the kind of cooler, uh, cooler, cooler, beautiful, um, tones in the original. And I've swapped that out for a brown which is actually turning out. I had my doubts at first. I was like, oh, should I have gone with the original? Because I do love it. It's so pretty. So to me, the original looks like, I think of like seascape, like lichen on rocks with like crashing waves. I don't know why, that's what I picture. Um, and mine, as it turns out, is now really um, kind of giving me these forest floor vibes. That, it's amazing what just changing one color can do. 
But yeah, this is my version. And I'm just, I'm just loving it. Love, love, loving it. So yeah, I, I guess I think of like, you know, the dark brown of the, either the earth or the tree trunks with this like really pale blue green that kind of reminds me of that. Um, I don't know the official terms of lichens, but it's, it's definitely some kind of like lichen that I've seen before. And then of course the golden yellow and the beautiful green moss colors. I don't know, just forest floor for me. So yes, I'm very happy, but I don't know. I'm kind of tempted to, to do the other one as well um, with the gray. So, so pretty. All right, so I am using the original yarns that were called for in this pattern, which are lichen and lace. You see that? Hopefully it's showing up. Um, it's called Rustic Heather Sport. It's 100% Canadian wool. 56 grams, 215 yards, made in Canada. And yeah, they're hand dyed. So at this point, I'm not, there's no point in alternating skeins with the dark brown. But as soon as I get to the body, which is um, all dark brown, I will start alternating just so we don't end up with that pooling. And it uh, looks a little more seamless. And yes, I'm using five different colors so there is hopefully you can see them oh can i remember the names i know the blue is called sky this dark brown is called black walnut um i think the green is called shrub the yellow is might be lichen and then the white is called i think it's called smoke it's not really white, it's more of a beigey gray maybe? I don't know, but I just love the colors. Yes, I can't wait to wear this this fall. I am making the size five, which is a 51, no, 50 and a half inch or something like that bust, finished bust circumference. And um, what else? I am using, oh yes, okay, so when I do my color work, after lots and lots of experience with color work now, I know that I have to go up two needle sizes for my color work as compared to my non-color work. So in this case, I am using, I believe, a US 6, US 6, which is a four millimeter for my color work. And then when I get to the parts that are gonna just be um, stockinette, no color changes, I will use a US 4. Um, can't for the life of me remember what size that is. Might be a three and a 3.5, maybe? Sorry, I don't have that written down. But yes, it is. There we go, because I use that for the bowling. So three and a half millimeter for my uh, stockinette, like non-color work sections. And for the ribbing, I used a US 2, 2.75 millimeter for the ribbing. I have not changed anything yet. So you knit, it's obviously knit top down. You do all this lovely color work, which is actually, which I haven't mentioned, but it's in the Bohus Stickning style, which is a tradition that was um, kind of big in the, I guess it was revived in the 80s, but it was big, I think in the 50s, a Swedish style, where you actually use pearl stitches. So how can I show this? If I turn it, whoops. I don't know if you can see, but there's texture to it. So it's not flat, so there's lots of pearl stitches. It just gives it a totally different look than traditional like Fair Isle knitting. Although it is quite similar to Fair Isle in that you're only using ever, you're only ever using two, two colors in a row or around, um, which makes it very easy, but you do have to switch between knits and pearls. So if you don't like purling, this might not be for you, but I am loving it and I've wanted to do a Bohus um, sweater uh, for a long time now. Um, the Bohus, they typically utilize Angora in theirs. Um, this is not obviously Angora, it's just 100% wool, but I'll talk a little bit about that in a, in a, in a minute when I talk about acquisitions. 
Uh, yeah, so what else was I going to say? Um, I'm thinking... I'm thinking I might do um, on the cuffs because there's no color work throughout the rest of the body. But to add a little bit of interest, I might, when I bind off, I might do like maybe two rounds on the cuffs of another color and perhaps at the bottom as well. I don't know. I like that look. So I did that for um, some mittens that I made by so Sophia Capella, uh, formerly Sophia Kemaborn. She has this mitten pattern called soft snow mittens, I think, and she she does that on her on the edges, and I think it looks so sweet. So I might try that on this just to see. I'll see how it looks. But yeah, very happy with it. And um, yeah, so you knit it's knit top down. You do this color work, and then there are I read ahead. There's there's short rows that are coming after the color work, and then you separate for sleeves. So. That's what I have to look forward to. And then it's just miles of stockinette in one color. <laughs> My least favorite part, but it'll be easy knitting at least. And um, I need some easy knitting coming up. I'll talk about that in a little bit too. Okay, so I think that's it for all of the, the actual works in progress. But I'm gonna talk a little bit about some acquisitions. Um, I don't typically do that, but I, I I feel like this is just a reminder to check out your local vintage shops. <laughs> um, so my mom came for a visit a couple weeks ago and before she stopped by our house, she had gone to, we have Value Village here, which is a thrift store. And she had gone there and she said that she found like a, a bunch of yarn. So she was showing what she found. It was like a, lots of like 100% wool. There was mohair, silk and like, um, just really lovely yarn that I never find there. Like most of the time it's acrylic that I'm finding. Uh, sometimes you can find cotton, but I've never ever found 100% wool. So this was pretty exciting. Actually, that's a lie. There was one time where I found one skein of sock yarn. But anyways, I digress. So I said, okay, well, we should go back and check again tomorrow because I might like to buy something. So we went back the next day and sure enough, they had actually put more out. So I don't know if this was an individual stash. I don't know if someone maybe had passed away and a relative, you know, wasn't a knitter and just donated all of their gorgeous yarn. But we actually found, um, so I found a sweater's quantity of Rico Design Essentials Super Kid Mohair Silk in this lovely like terracotta color, which is so pretty. Um, these are 25 gram balls, but I think I got seven of them and they were, I had a coupon. When you make donations, when you donate items to Value Village, they will give you a 20% off coupon that you can use on a future, pur future purchase. So I did that. <laughs> so the, each ball ended up costing me $4. $4 for silk mohair. And I can see the price tag on there. Originally $16. So that was a big score. And then, so I got a sweater's quantity in this and I got a sweater's quantity in this gorgeous teal. It's showing up way more blue on screen. It's more greeny blue. So pretty. Um, again, Rico Designs Essentials, Super Kid Mohair Silk. Um, yeah, and I got eight of these. And then the craziest, most coolest find, I think, most coolest, coolest, <laughs> was this, of course, beautiful teal color. I don't know if you can see the floof on there. Hopefully you can. But this is actually Angora, Angora Rabbit. So it is by Fleece Artist. Uh, it's called Bunny Hair and it's hand dyed, 90% Angora, 10% nylon, 250 meters, 50 grams. And I believe it's, when I looked it up, it's a DK weight. So it's a little bit thicker, but it is so, so soft. And okay, again, $4 I paid, $4 a skein. And I got, um, I forget how many skeins now. Two or four. Two or four, but look at the original price on there. $30 for 
for one and I got it for four. <laughs> so yay, obviously it pays to check out your local thrift store and I can thank my mom for that because I hadn't been to Value Village actually shopping. I've been dropping stuff off, but I haven't, I haven't gone shopping in a long time. So thanks again, mom. She also picked up some mohair and she got some of that angora in a lovely purple and, and it was like it was made for us because like teal turquoise those are my favorite colors and hers is purple and it was like they, there was one of each so very lucky um i don't know what i'm gonna do with it but again speaking of angora and traditional boho stickening um knitting that's what they would typically use although the Angora they use is more of a fingering weight so but I had it just so coincidental but I had ordered this book after seeing it on lovely Mel of Mel Make Stuff her podcast if you haven't seen her podcast it is absolutely wonderful highly recommend she's always making something unique and different and I love I love that like she's she's definitely um seems to be in it for the not only the end product but the like the experience of trying different things and different techniques and I'm here for it and she's such a wonderful teacher she's very good at explaining what she's done and she's just anyways highly highly recommend I love Mel's podcast and um, she's had a few she's been back recently and um, yeah I'm all caught up now but yes so I saw this book that she was knitting from she made two bohas stickening uh, sweaters one for her sister and one for herself out of this book I believe and so I had picked it up I don't know that it's still in print I got it on Amazon um, and I definitely paid more than the sticker price on here so <laughs> I don't know it was the last copy that I saw on there too so I don't know I don't know if you can still get a hold of it but you might want to check it out it's very interesting I haven't read it yet but it starts off with the tr like the tradition uh it speaks about the tradition of of boho stickening and um goes into the techniques that are used and then there's some patterns so this is a this is a very famous one called the blue shimmer it's really pretty really pretty there's a bunch of shimmers um i want to show you this one so if you watch fruity knitting you may have seen that andrea made this one i think it's the wild apple yes wild apple which i love i would love to make that one and she did it yes this is made with the angora <laughs> 15 different shades um i don't know that i that's in my budget uh these are really pretty as well these are like the the shimmering no the mist series so there's like a sweater and i think that's a cowl these patterns aren't in the book which is unfortunate because i really wanted to make one of those too i think they're so gorgeous but yeah there's like lots of patterns in here um including that wild apple this is called the swan Hopefully you can see that which is really pretty as well there's the red edge cardigan some of them I can't show you because it's just the chart <laughs> and this is the blue yoke uh, blue shimmer I think wait what is it called yes blue shimmer cardigan so there's a sweater or pullover version and then a cardigan version um, a lot of these have both in there and then of course the wild apple Ooh, so pretty yeah so that is what i picked up and i'm looking forward to reading it and then uh, perhaps making one um so you can get kits like authentic boha stickening made out of angora wool kits 
from, I think it's called Angora Garnet. I can put a link down below. They are extremely pricey. Um, I think I priced out the wild apple kit for me and my size. I can't remember if there's different sizes or not. I actually don't know about the sizing in these, to be honest. I haven't really looked. Not sure how size inclusive they are, but the price of the kit was like when I did the conversion from the Swedish kroners, is it? Is that right? KR? I think so. To um, Canadian, it was like $600. And that was without shipping. That was just, <laughs> just for the kit. <laughs> and I was like, no, not within my budget. So I might have to find something else. But I was thinking, you know, why couldn't we just swap out the Angora for something like an alpaca lace? or a mohair or something like that that still has a floof to it that kind of blends the colors together that makes them look more like watercolor. I think that could work. Um, or like the Lunenberg that I'm making is just 100% wool and I find it looks really pretty as well. It doesn't really have to have the floof factor to it. Uh, but yeah, so that's just something that I'm exploring and I uh, have Mel to think. <laughs> to think for that I get so influenced by her she's doing a bunch of Japanese knits right now that are just stunning I can't wait to see her mohair one um, when she's done it I think she said she's gonna show that on the next one so anyways um, I think that's it for all the making talk I don't think I have anything else to chat about other than life stuff so if you were just here for the making thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time and if you're sticking around for life stuff I'll keep it brief, but basically um, things have been kind of crazy, like what's been going on? My daughter, our youngest da gra daughter graduated from grade school, middle school, so she's entering high school in September, and so we had a graduation for her and we had some family attend, which was so lovely, and um, She's gotten into a an arts program like this is so different from when I was in school There's like almost like it is literally like majors and minors and stuff like that in high school now where you can decide like if you want to go down a certain Pathway for your education and specialize in things and I, that just I don't feel like that was an option back in my day Of course that was many years ago now but yeah, so she's, she got into, actually accepted into media arts and visual arts, and she had to make a choice on which one she, she wanted to major in. So she chose media arts, and she's going to minor in visual arts. So yeah, really arts-heavy uh, school schooling coming up, I guess, and we'll see. She doesn't have to stay with the program, but, you know, she's, she's always had an interest in art and drawing, and she's never... As I'm never not knitting, she's never not drawing. Like it's just, it's her thing. She just, she has her passion and it's wonderful. Um, it's wonderful to see uh, like such an age, su such a young age that she's already kind of seems to have found her calling. So that's exciting. And um, what else? We went to a concert um, at, we have a local park. It's a big park called Bell Park and uh, there, there's an amphitheater there and so it's like kind of like an outdoor setting and I love outdoor concerts. So we saw Alan Doyle who is or was the lead singer for Great Big C and that was so much fun. Um, his music is very like East Coast fiddle, um, get up and dance, like it's just super uplifting and uh, it, was, it was really really fun. Um, and yeah, so there was, it was a girls night that night it was myself, um, my stepdaughter, my daughter, my mom, and my aunt. And uh, yeah, it was a really fun time. And what else? Um, we went to Birch Lake last weekend to see my mom and my stepdad. And that was a lovely weekend. Unfortunately, it rained on the Saturday, but we did sneak in a swim on the Friday. So she lives on a lake and um we got to see all of the new updates to their to their house which i always call camp because that's where our family's camp was but they've built like it's not a camp <laughs> it's a house it has indoor plumbing now and and electricity and yeah it's it's beautiful it's coming along and it's been a, a lot of work they she has done 
her and and her husband have done so much work themselves on this beautiful house and it just it looks so nice um so that was really really fun we played a lot of skip bow which i'd never played before it's kind of like an uno game but not really like it's it's really fun. I don't know if you guys have ever played it, but yeah, highly recommend. It's a great game for people of all ages. Um, so we played that. And what else did we do? I'm trying to think. Well, the, I guess the bi the big news and the, the biggest stressful, stressful news is that uh, we... Okay, I'll go through the timeline. It's quick. So on a Sunday, we went to an open house and looked at a house. On the Monday, we put in an offer on the house and we're told that um, the people who were selling the house asked if we would remove a condition. The condition was that we needed to sell our house before we could buy their house, basically. And they wanted us to remove that, but we said, no, we weren't comfortable. So they went with somebody else's offer. Um, and then late that night, late Monday night, came back. I guess their deal fell through with the other people. So they came back to us and accepted our offer. And on so that was on the Monday. So then our realtor was like, OK, um, you got to get your house on the market like this week, like because we had a week to sell it, basically. So and our house was a disaster. <laughs> We did nothing. We had done nothing to get it ready for pictures, for selling, because I guess we just, it was totally on a whim. So I took the next day off of work and just, we just spent like, well, we started actually the night before the Monday night, we started cleaning and all Tuesday. And on Tuesday, so the pictures were gonna be taken on the Wednesday and it was gonna go up on the market on that evening. So we had to get a picture ready. So we're just cleaning the crap out of it. And then our realtor calls and says, hey, like I know um, I've heard of a couple that's looking for a house in your neighborhood. They're having a really hard time getting over bid and they're getting very frustrated. And they were like, they, want, they were wondering if they could look at your house before it goes on the market. And they're offering more than what we're gonna be putting it up for. So is it okay if they come look at it at five o'clock? And I was just like, oh my God, our house is a disaster. So I was like, yep, yeah, sure. So John and I like mad rat, like mad rushed and like cleaned the crap out of the house. It still wasn't even ready. Um, and I, at the at the end, I was just literally, we had all these blue rubber made bins. I was just shoving stuff into the bins just to get declutter. I was just like, I can't even, I don't have time to sort through this. Let's just dump it all in and uh, throw it in the unfinished basement. That's what we did. Um, and so sure enough, the couple came by and looked at our house on the, what is this, the Tuesday. Yes, on the Tuesday we were cleaning. And we went out for supper, we went out for sushi to celebrate our, uh, our offer that we put in on the house that we wanted. And um, so they looked at the house while we were eating and we came home and like, Two hours later, we got an offer from the couple wanting to buy our house and we accepted it. <laughs> and so in three days, we bought and sold our <laughs> bought a new house and sold our old house. <laughs> and then, of course, there was all the mad dash to like get everything else in order and get the inspection done and everything like that. But anyways, long story short, we bought a new house. We're still in our old house until uh, September 4th is when they take possession. So um, and we take we get our new house on August 30th. So we have until then to like get everything packed up. We have the movers booked. Um, we've slowly been kind of getting things together. And yeah, we're moving. I can't believe it. And so the new house is I live right now. I live within the city of Sudbury itself, like pretty close to downtown, actually. I'm, I'm in what's called the West End. Um, but this new house is actually in Greater Sudbury. So it's, it's still considered part of Greater Sudbury, I guess, Sudbury. Um, but there's like little towns all around the main city of Sudbury. So I'll be in one of those. Actually, it's not even in the little town. It's considered part of it, but it's, it's in a subdivision kind of on its own. The reason we moved out there was well, because the house suited our needs, but mostly because the backyard is like half forced. 
it goes right into a green space um, of all forest, like just deep forest. And I was like, oh, okay, sold. <laughs> to have a full on forest, man, that's so cool. I'm so, so excited to explore it. So that was one of the big selling points. Um, the other one was that it had enough space for everybody. Everyone has their own room and we have a guest room now. So we actually have space for, you know, when my mom and, and my stepdad come visit, they have a place to stay. Now we have space for everybody and a forest in the backyard and it needs some landscaping for sure. Like in my opinion, I like, I did a lot of work on this place, putting in pollinator gardens and it's kind of like a trial and error. So now I know what I want to do like in the future, what, what kinds of flowers I'd like to plant and what works for me and what doesn't. I hate weeding. So I really have to make sure that I don't create these massive beds that are just going to fill up with weeds. Cause that's just, I'm looking at one right now. That's why I'm saying that I don't want to have to weed all the time. Um, and one of the other, okay, one of the other cool things was when we showed up at the house and we were looking at the backyard. So there's a little deck off the backyard and a gazebo that's coming with it. And um, we saw a little chipmunk on the steps on the, on the back porch, like, hey, where's my seeds? So I know someone's been feeding them. <laughs> so perfect. I know they'll be there waiting for me when I get there too. So there will be little critters. I'll be sad to see um, to leave the critters that I've made friends with here. Um, but I'm sure there'll be new ones. And we saw um, a snowshoe hare when we were there the second time as well. We've been there twice, uh, the second time for the inspection and we saw a snowshoe hare. It was like under the porch and it just came like bounding out. So I'm like, oh, I love it. I love it. I love critters. So yes, we're very, very excited to start this new chapter of our lives. And um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see where I end up podcasting from. Like if I can find a spot outside to sit or if I'm going to have to be inside and do it. But I have a, so we have a guest room, but I'm going to also use it as my craft room. So I think like it's hard to remember how big the rooms were and stuff like that. But I think I can fit a little table in there and use that for sewing because I've got a serger now. My aunt kindly gave me a serger so now I have a sewing machine and a serger that I can set up and leave set up so I can actually be more inclined to use them and there's a big closet in there so I can store my yarn hopefully and uh yeah so I'll have a little space to actually do some do some crafting from and we're gonna have room for me to finally get a spinning wheel so that's what <laughs> that's what I've asked for for my birthday my birthday is coming up on Monday and um, yeah, John was like at a loss. He's like, I don't know what to get you this year. I'm like, I already know what I want. It's okay. <laughs> we'll go half seas on it because it's an expensive one. But um, yeah, so I'm looking at getting um, an Ashford Kiwi 3, I think it's called. Um, it came recommended by someone at my knit group and I've heard other people recommend it and it's it's one of the smaller ones so it's not too not too huge uh, but all the reviews I've read have been really positive about it so I think that's what I'm gonna what I'm gonna go with so I'm really looking forward to doing that as well uh, yeah so that's our big news and I don't know this might be the last time I podcast from this house which kind of makes me sad but but um, I'm excited for this new couple that's gonna gonna get um, get to live here and hopefully enjoy it as much as we have and make it their own. And yeah, it's exciting. I'm happy for them too. All right, so I think I've blabbed on long enough. But um, yeah, um, I'd love to know what you're working on. If you'd like to leave me a comment down below or share something. I don't know what what you've been doing this summer um do you have any exciting plans there's still a whole nother month left or if you're in the um <laughs> sorry i always that's that's terrible if you're in the southern hemisphere um how is your winter going and what are you looking forward to doing so yeah i will leave it there and i hope that you have the most wonderful next little while until i see you again take care and happy making bye